Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video, I'm going to be looking at how we open the hi-hat on 16th patterns, meaning if we're playing continuous 16ths on the hi-hat, whether with one hand or two hands. I've done some informational videos about how we play pea soups, which is the open long sound that's an eighth note long on the downbeats or the upbeats, the numbers or the ands, in other words. Uh, and we've looked at hi-hat barks, where we've opened the hi-hat and closed it very quickly on 16ths. Uh, where you get a very quick, stabby sound. And now we're going to look at just generally opening and closing the hi-hat within a 16th note continuous pattern on the hi-hat. We're talking about something like this. crash the crash. So let's have a look at how we develop the skill to open the hi-hat like that. And I recommend you get the hang of playing uh, open hi-hat sounds in an eighth note and quarter note context first because it's a little bit more relaxed. And uh, next, let's, let's see if we can sort of methodically work our way through the most common options that you'd want to use when you're playing open hi-hat sounds in 16ths. Now, you might be playing single-handed or hand-to-hand -hand 16th pattern. So, uh, get rid of this thing. Um, we need to uh, just think about the, the different mechanics of both of those things. Now, let's start off by playing a 16th note groove, but just two beats in the bar, two four time. One iana, two iana, one iana, two iana, one iana, two iana. And we'll start off with a basic bass on the one, snare on the two. When you start getting the hang of this, uh, there's like thousands of different possibilities you could get into, but once you understand the basic principle, I'm sure you can work that out, or there's books about it as well. Here we go. Okay, that's our basic 16th note pattern. And what we're gonna do, again, for some strange reason, I like working my way from the back to the front, if you like, but we're gonna open our hi-hat on the R, so just on the very last 16th of our 2-4 bar. So it would be one E and a two E and a. Now, I, I prefer to use uh, a sort of heel down method to open my hi hat here, but different people do it in different ways. You could use a heel up or a heel down. With heel down, I feel like I can sort of uh, control the, the swell of the sound, if you like, uh, better. When I try to play heel up, uh, I find it's a bit too brutish, or I, I can't really control uh, the way my foot and leg move. So that's my preference. If you like doing it with your heel up, go ahead. Whatever works is absolutely fine. Um, I guess one possible sort of uh, objective advantage to playing heel down with this is it allows you to keep your balance at least on the heel of your left foot if you're playing something a bit more busy. But that, that's, um, you know, it's not a bad idea to learn how to balance comfortably enough on your chair that you don't really need to to balance on your feet at all, but uh, that's a whole other story. So I've got my two Iana, I'm going to play the snare and the bass now with this. Now, what we want to do with this is maybe work it up to speed a little bit. I always talk about doing things really slowly. And I think you should do this really slowly as well to try and get the, the absolute best articulation you can. But I would also think about trying to get up to the type of speeds that you might want to play uh, when you're playing these sort of 16s. Uh, again, since a lot of us are not Brazilians, uh, it might be quite challenging to play like really, really fast 16s. It's uh, one of my ongoing projects to get my uh, single-handed 16s sounding at, at least reasonably fast. Uh, and it is challenging. But let's see if I can do it a little bit faster.
Okay, now at that speed, you notice already that the clarity can get lost a little bit if I'm not concentrating on it really well. So bear that in mind. Now, if you want to, you could now try and vary the bass drum or the snare a little bit within that same context of the open hi-hat on the R of the two. And see what happens. Again, do that at slower speeds. Uh, and then build yourself up a little bit. But you get the idea. The next one, uh, we've got the and of two. So it'd be... Now we've got that, again, quite a short amount of time that the hi-hat is open. One e ana, two e ana. Same thing, um, I notice a little bit of a, a different feeling in my body, there's, there's, my balance goes off a little bit when I do that for some reason. So that kind of alerts me to the idea that maybe I want to spend a little bit more time practicing that one until I get really comfortable with it. And maybe I just stay with the bass on the one and the snare on the two for that and, and leave it be until I start feeling a lot more comfortable and then adding maybe a bit of snare drum and bass variation. Now, we've got the two E immediately after the snare. So. Surprisingly enough, we're going to have the two next, and that's coincident with the snare. Here we go. Okay, that's it. Now, again, certain ones will jump out and feel a bit weird to you, and some of them will feel sort of easy and relaxed. And, you know, the, maybe the ones that, that feel good, you can start embellishing those with different bass drum patterns and different snare drum patterns, try and improvise on that a little bit. Uh, and the ones that feel a little bit awkward, maybe like the and for me and the two for me, well, so stay and work on those, be a bit more patient with them. Next one is the one E and R, ah, the R ah of the one. Now, as you're working on this, make sure that you pay a lot of attention to the hi-hat opening exactly where you want it, and it's closed by the next 16th. So in that case, the hi-hat is closed on the two. You don't want to hear any uh, hi-hat open sound after the fact, after the, the one E and R ah that you've just played on. Also, there's a little bit of a tendency sometimes to sort of preemptively open the hi-hat uh, and this would be maybe noticeable a lot more in 16ths than uh, when you're playing something with 8th notes, um, just because th there's more note density. But there might be a tendency, again, if I'm doing the 1E and R, a tendency to start relaxing the foot a little bit earlier. So again, the remedy to that is slow it down and really learn how to control your foot very carefully. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, those sort of slow tempos um, that's where you get to think, am I going to play heel down, heel up, and, you know, what sort of mechanics work well for me here. Okay, next, uh, the one and. Now, as well as making sure that you close the hi-hat at the right time, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to do it too late, 
Also, don't do it too early. If you close the hi-hat too quickly, you end up kind of um, making a 30-second note in between the two sixteenths or something like that, or, you know, God help you, something uneven. But um, now, that might be something that you're trying to achieve rhythmically, and that's a different story, but for the purpose of this, we want the hi-hat opening on one sixteenth and closing on the next. I'm doing one and. Ah, I didn't like it. Okay, my body doesn't like the ands at all. And, uh, you know, this, this is something interesting that comes up in teaching quite a lot, is that I'll discover I'm working through something that I think is uh, fairly basic with somebody, and I'm demonstrating it, and I'm, yeah, my body doesn't like it at all. And so m maybe that's a thing I'll note to myself and, and practice those uh, open ands with sixteens. There you go, we discover things all the time. Right, one E. Now a bit of improvising is creeping in. I need to keep my discipline. Finally the one. Now, that's eight possibilities, so practice each one of those, I recommend, and then you can start turning it into to bars of 4-4 four, four time if you like, but if you keep that in 2-4, um, it just limits the, the number of different options you need to try. Uh, now, once you can open each one of those individually, I strongly recommend having a bit of a noodle about without having a bit of an improvise, just to see that your body is happy to... Um, to to just do this stuff at will. So you're, you're having your musical imagination engaged. And if you just started working on the coordination of this stuff, don't worry if the improvising is a bit sloppy, that's fine. But I, I very, very strongly recommend that you start improvising uh, as soon as you feel comfortable with a few of these patterns. So next, what I would do is think, well, we can open the hi-hat 16ths, but a lot of the time, even when you're playing a continuous 16th pattern, you might want to have uh, a longer sort of pea soup sound or a, a longer, uh, like an eighth note worth of open hi-hat. So if I'm going to go back to the end of the bar and um, we'd have the uh, four E and a, the and a, not the four, sorry, the two E and a, the and a of the second beat. And this time I'm going to keep the hi-hat open for two sixteenths. Now, that's not going to work that well, I don't think, if you open the hi-hat too much. So you really have to get a bit of control, and uh, it's, it's a nice introduction to uh, starting to learn about the, the finer and nuanced points of playing the hi-hat, because this is a beautiful thing just on its own, as uh, Max Roach has demonstrated on more than one occasion. But uh, let's see what happens if I'm, if I'm overzealous. It sounds a bit over the top to me. There might be situations where you want to use it, so anything is possible in the right musical context. But when working on this, I would try and look at a, a, quite a gentle open sound there. Now, uh, coordinating that with the bass drum is also interesting. So once you've got the hang of just the open sound with your hi-hat foot and your riding hand on the hi-hat, uh, try and work some different bass drum uh, options with that and get used to it. Next, we're going to do the two and the E. Now, the one and and the ah, uh, one and ah. Uh.
finally, the one E. Once you've got the hang of that, try and open, say, on both the ands. Uh, one, and, ah, uh, two, and, ah. Uh. And <laughs> we'll give this a try uh, on the one and the two. The one E and the two E, obviously. I don't, uh, I don't like that. I'm not getting on with it, but uh, it's worth a try. Get, get the hang of doing that as well, because you want to have all the options there. Now, as I was saying, once you've got the hang of it, try and have a bit of an improvise, and maybe start off just playing straight sixteenths without opening the hi-hat too much, and just add a few uh, short sixteenth note hi-hat openings, splashes if you like, um, and sometimes longer ones. Whatever. What's that fill for at the end? I don't know. It, it gives a feeling of resolution, doesn't it? Anyway, so that's your hi-hat 16th single-handed. Uh, tune in next week when I'll show you the hand-to-hand -hand option using single strokes on the hi-hat. And there's some various bits and bobs you want to think about in terms of wiring your brain for some interesting coordination. But that more or less covers the topic. As always, I've forgotten to advertise myself in the earlier part of the video, but I am a drum teacher. Uh, I'm teaching you the drums for free on YouTube and I hope you enjoy it and learn something from it. But if you feel like you would want to uh, get to have some more personal interaction with the teacher, feel free to get in touch with me. The contact details are in the description box below and we can have a chat about whether there's something I can do to help you progress your drumming. In the meantime, if you enjoy this video and you'd like to be aware of any new releases that I make that seem to be coming uh, reasonably frequently at the moment, uh, please hit the subscribe button, give the video the old thumbs up, and most importantly, make some comments in the comments section. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, uh, and any suggestions I'm pretty receptive to. So let me know something you'd like to hear a video about, and if I'm interested in it, or if it's something I know how to explain or answer, I'll go for it. Now, it's time for you to go off and practice. <laughs>